that feared God and esteemed God and stayed away from evil. And this man loved God. And this man was called Job. And the Bible says he was the greatest in the East. God does not want to be our priority. Then we become liabilities. Tell him, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Tell him, and all these things. Now, can you define what things are? That if we ask him anything according to his will, you know what anything means? Anything means anything. Who has a dictionary? Anybody with a dictionary in your phone? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what I want us to look for? I want us to look for the meaning of anything. That if we ask for anything according to his will, he's hearing us. Anybody with a dictionary? <laughs> you are really tired of life. You don't even want to know. <laughs> I, I now see a real problem. We are tired of life. We are not interested in knowing. What is the meaning of anything? Anybody? Okay, Deacon, whatever. So, how do we define whatever? If you ask God for whatever. Okay, Deacon, is there another different meaning? <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Anything. Anything. He hears us. This is the confidence. That if I ask God for anything according to his will, what is his will? I wish above all things that you may prosper. What is his will? The Lord God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That is the will of God. Psalm 112 from verse number 1. Put it there. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the will of God. So when you are going to pray, don't pray as if God will allow you have a one-roomed house but will get angry because you asked for a 12-bedroomed house. Because that's how some people pray. In fact, when they hear some people praying, prayer is going on, New King James Version, prayer is going on, prayer is going on, and you hear somebody saying, Lord, I thank you. I received this 13-bedroomed house in Nyali. Say, eh? Hey. Watu wengine wanadhanianga wako juu sana. Wataka kuleta kierere mbele za Mungu. Nyenyekea mbele za Mungu. Actually, we call people praying according to God's will. We call it pride. There is a difference between pride and walking in what God has planned for your life. The plan of God concerning your life is bigger than you can imagine. Brothers, it has not yet entered into the hearts of a man. No eye has seen, no ear has heard the things God has prepared for those that love God. There are things prepared for every God lover. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who does what? Now you are not talking very well. Blessed is the man that does what? that fears the lord and he does what and he delights greatly in the commandments of god you know why you're in the house of god this evening is because the commandments of god is your delight you love the word of god you love the, the, the word you love the rema you love to hear from god so you delight yourself greatly in the commandments of god look at verse number two his descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright. You are not talking very well. The generation of the upright will be what? Will be what? Will be blessed. Look at verse number three. Wealth. A 
and riches will be in his house and his righteousness Jesus said seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness and then all these other things will be added unto you so he says wealth and riches will be in the house of this man and his righteousness endures forever one of the marks of the fear of God is wealth and riches the fear of God is not walking like this praise the Lord my brother <laughs> we are humbling ourselves before the Lord <laughs> praise the Lord no that is not the fear of God the Bible says the fear of a man brings snare but this is the fear of God wealth and riches will be found in his house and his righteousness will endure forever. Put it there in the message translation of the same Psalm 112 verse number 3. In other words, God says when I bless you, I don't just want to bless you. I will bless your son. I will bless your son's son. I will bless your son's son's son, daughters, 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 that 10 generations from today, when they look at your children, they say their father served God. Their mother feared God. Their mother obeyed God. When God wants to bless, he blesses you, blesses your children, blesses the generations to come. Shout, I hear you, men of God. That is how big God is. God is big that when he wants to bless you, he does not just deal with you. He deals with you. The thing goes to your child. You know, a number of us don't know yet that there is a level of righteousness, of power, of the blessing of God that is on your children even if they are not saved. No, you don't understand this. You know, I've heard people preach it, Bishop, that your children will one day have to take a personal decision and give their lives to Jesus or else God does not know them. But that is not true. Even your child that is not saved, the moment you are saved and you are connected to God, there is a level of grace they enjoy because they are connected to you. There is a level of power they enjoy because they are connected to you. Now, let me give you that scripture. Now, my brother, get this. The Bible says, if a believing husband is willing to live with a non-believing wife, uh, 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 if the husband is believing and the wife is not a believer, but the wife is willing to live with him, let him not send the wife away. And then Paul gives a reason for that. Get that. Put it that there for us. Uh, so that we can be able to go there then we come back to this so that you understand something when paul is closing he says if that was not so then your children will have not been up will not be counted as righteous which means your faith goes beyond you can i make this statement your sin will go beyond you and your faith will go beyond you your wickedness will go beyond you. And your generosity will go beyond you. The things you do in this house will live beyond you. The things you do against this house will live beyond you. That should be either 1st or 2nd Corinthians. Chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14. Put it there for me please. Shout my generation. I didn't hear you. It's like you ate a lot today. Shout my generation. Is blessed. You know what a generation is? A generation is the period of time between the birth of a man and the birth of his children. Between you and your son, one generation. Between your son and your grandson, another generation. Between your grandson and your great-grandson, another generation. God says, when you fear God, even your great-grandson that is not aware of your fear for God, Live 
with, with the fear of God. Fear God. Don't collect a married man. You are putting generations on the line. And there was silence in the church. Don't go after a married woman as a young boy. Nobody may see you, but generations don't need spectacles to see you. Your children will become you without seeing you. I told one man of God that a pastor does not raise the ministry he wants to see. A pastor raises the ministry that is like him. If a pastor is not a giver, I'll not finish that one. If a pastor has no morals, if a pastor has a zip problem, I will not finish that one. Let me explain this then we are almost closing. The unbelieving husband shares to an extent, okay, New King James first, Glory to God. I love this. I love this. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But now, they may not be born again, but they are holy. Now, listen to this. They are holy and one of the partners is not saved. The anointing in the one that is saved passes on to the children. So God is saying, when you are dealing with me, please, when you are dealing with God, look at God as a God that is greater than you are today. Message translation of that. Let's look at it. Look at this. The unbelieving husband shares to an extent in the holiness of his wife. So holiness can be shared. That's why Bishop, when you serve a man of God that is holy, holiness rubs on you. When you serve a man of God that is humble, humility rubs on you. You share his humility. When you serve a man of God that is a crook and a thief, you receive that anointing. You will be a bigger crook. Actually, when the anointing falls on sons, it becomes greater. If you don't have a zip discipline as a pastor, you will raise Casanovas and prostitutes, dogs and goats in the church. It's a spirit. Holiness can be shared. And if holiness can be shared, immorality can be shared. That's why Paul said, don't eat with anybody called a brother that has a zip problem. Don't eat with him. Why? Because eating is called fellowship. Has somebody ever called you and said, brother, can we fellowship over a cup of coffee? In other words, something goes on in eating. When you sit on a table with an anointed man to eat, something happens more than the food. That's why prophet Samuel told Saul, you will eat with me today and then I will release you to go. And the meal that he reserved was a meal that was symbolic. He had told the cook, prepare the upper shoulder of the meal and keep it. And the Bible says the government will be on the shoulders of Emmanuel. The shoulder symbolizes authority and governance. So Saul ate a meal that was symbolic of his authority and rulership. Brethren, don't just be eating. Don't just have an appetite for food. I told one young man that prophets don't eat in the public. Did you know that there are three major enemies of the anointing? And they are not enemies as such as I mentioned them. One is food. Number two is sleep. Number three is the bed. 
I will explain one day. Do you remember the prophet? God told him after you do whatever you do, run. But he went back and ate. And that was it. How many of you have realized that every great man of God does not eat everywhere? You can beg him. You can prepare food. You can tell him, come and eat. You'll wonder, what did I do that this man cannot eat my food? When an anointed man eats in your house, raise your hands and thank God. Because prophets don't eat any howly. Elijah ate in the house of the widow and the famine was swallowed up. When Abraham saw men of God coming, the first thing he did is he ran to prepare something for them. And while they were eating, they said, where is Sarah? He knew the connection between food and the supernatural. When Elisha went to Zarephath, the woman quickly presented food. And the Bible says, every time he came to Zarephath, he went there to eat. Where a prophet eats, something happens. Let's go back so that I close. Now, give me the message translation of that. So, a man can share in the holiness of the wife. Let me tell all of you that your husband is not born again. With time he will bow. He doesn't know what he's sharing in. With time he will bow. There is something about God. Even though Paul was not born again. When God whipped him from the horse and he fell down. And God spoke. The next thing he did is. Who are you, Lord? How did he know it is the Lord? He was not born again. But when God speaks, a drunkard will become sober. When God speaks, a madman will know this is God. There's something about God. Look at this. Pick it up from verse number one. Somebody shout, God is great. God is generational. Okay, okay, okay. First Corinthians chapter 7, then we come back to this. I want you to see that when God blesses, he blesses a generation. When God blesses, he goes beyond you. He should tell you how great God is. That when God wants to deal with you, he goes beyond you into the generation of your children. Don't limit a generation of God to a present time realities only. The unbelieving husband shares to an extent in the holiness of his wife and the unbelieving wife is likewise touched by the holiness of the husband otherwise your children will be left out as it is they also are included in the spiritual papa papa papa, papa the spiritual papa the, the spiritual pap the spiritual purposes of god which means if God calls you, your children have no otherwise but to serve God. I speak from this altar as a servant of Jehovah God. Your children will serve Jehovah. Your children will follow God. You have committed yourself in the kingdom. Your children will not embarrass you all over the place. The power of God is on their lives right now. Your daughters will marry in the will of God. Your sons will marry in the will of God. Your children are included in the purposes of God. Shout, I serve a big, 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 big God. The insurance cover of God goes beyond you that is born again. God has an insurance that has covered your children. Stop looking at God. Listen, there are some of you here that are wondering how will my children go to the university? It's none of your business. He is a generation of God. The generation of the upright will be blessed. God has already made provision for wealth and riches in their houses. When you wake up in the morning, lay hands on them and tell them you are blessed beyond the curse. The God that called me already called you. The God that ordained me already ordained you. You are included in the spiritual purposes of the God that I serve. Somebody shout, yes! None of you will bury your children. Your children are supposed to bury you. None of you will be represented the day your children are getting married. And someone will represent you because you died before your time. 
you will dance in the wedding of your children you will give out your children by yourself shut my children are blessed So God is saying when you are praying, pray with that knowledge. Of course, I release the anointing to those who want to continue. Brothers, that's why even if you are single, don't toy around with your zip. 